Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Nate, and I produce under the name Protoculture, as well as Shana Chronicles. My remix and uh, production credentials include work with Armin van Buren, uh, Paul Oakenfold, uh, BT, Brian Adams, and a whole lot more. But I'm really here today to uh, walk you through a new plugin that I've been using a lot and uh, I'm really enjoying at the moment. This is Hype from Adapter Audio and Ursa DSP in collaboration with Plugin Alliance. We're going to take a look at it today. It's a pretty unique little uh, coloration slash vibe box that you can use in your mixes, everything from single tracks right through to buses and on the master. It's super easy to use, but also won't let you down if you want to dive in and kind of really control things uh, with finer detail. So without further ado, let's get into the DAW and take a look. All right, so this video, I don't want to get into the complete technical workings of this plugin. Uh, I'd rather like to just offer you a couple of usage cases and some opinions on what I think is so great about this plugin. Now, of course, you can't do stuff like take a lead sound like this and turn it into something like this. It's that typical OTT, over compressed or upward compression sound uh, with a, a ton of harmonics thrown into that as well, giving you that really nice, brittle, upfront, kind of distorted lead sound that's become very prevalent in a lot of electronic music these days. Uh, it's a signature sound and it's great to be able to do that with this, uh, but I think this is far more useful as a mixing tool as, or, or as kind of like a modern channel strip in my opinion. The way that it's been designed, you can control harmonics and kind of go a little bit overboard without adding into too much additional distortion, but more importantly, you can essentially mix with distortion, uh, adding harmonics, but without drastically changing the level of the audio that you're putting through it. Kind of a different way to approaching stuff uh, as opposed to the usual EQ and uh, compressor combo in a channel strip. Now the UI is a pleasure to work with. It's really simple when you need it to be, but also can be more granular if you want to dive down into the settings uh, as you see fit. It's parallel, so this hype dial here will control how much of the effect that you're applying. You've got some easy controls here to smooth out the sound a little bit with sort of a predefined EQ curve. Uh, the target is a control for the dynamics processes inside of this. Uh, there are a number of different compression algorithms and this affects them slightly differently. Uh, they're all quite modern sounding compression um, algorithms, everything from sort of very over the top, uh, over compressed with sort of upward compression happening as well, to some more standard compressor behavior, as well as an octo in there, which is nice for vocals. The harmonics as well are also more modern in nature, wave shapers, sign folders. Sign folding is one that I really, really like using a lot, uh, that wave shaping algorithm. It's fantastic on bass sounds. It gives us stuff almost like a... Uh, sort of gritty FM synthesized quality to it. And then lastly, the stereo section as well, which also helps you seat things in the stereo field. One other fantastic feature is the multiband section. The crossover filters here, you actually have the ability to add a linear filter mode for these crossovers. And this solves a massive problem that I have with OTT is that it wreaks absolute havoc on the phase of the audio that you put through there. Uh, so if you're gonna start dialing in settings further down in the frequency spectrum, working on bass sounds and such, uh, use it, having the ability to uh, enable linear filters really solves a lot of your problems down in that in that end. Lastly, this is super versatile. Uh, you could use this on single channels. It's also right at home on a bus and even the master bus, uh, considering the linear mode filters that you have. Right, so I want to just move on and do something practical with this. We'll just take a look at some examples of how I would use this in a track that I've just started. It's very much work in progress, uh, but let's dive in and just take a look at where hype can really add an edge to this mix. Now, one of my favorite places to use hype thus far has been on bass. Uh, I'll take a look at the bass bus that I have here. I've got this diva uh, bass and a, another bass coming from a sample here. Uh, one's a sort of mid layer, that'd be this one here, and then the diva is making up the sub. It's a very simple uh, saw, 16th saw bass sound. Uh, let's just solo our kick and our bass and we'll take a listen. So I'm going to apply hype to this uh, diva bass here. I want it to really kind of pop out and be quite plucky in nature and really sort of enhance the presence of the sound. I've done a little bit of processing here already. There's an SPL twin tube, which I use on bass quite often. Um, tremulated from Sound Toys. This is the Kirchhoff EQ as well from Plugin Alliance. 
a little bit of EQ going on there. Um, and then Shaper Box just handling ducking on the bass. Let's insert hype here at the end of the chain and just before the side chain. Uh, now you'll notice this comes up slightly differently to what you may be seeing. What I like to do, my workflow, is have the hype dial turned up to the max. Uh, we've got these all set to zero and target we can adjust as we need. Uh, what I do is just save this as a default preset so that this comes up like this every single time. I want to be able to start from scratch and dial in my settings uh, at max and then rather work backwards and dial that down if I need to. Um, so let's just take a listen to the sub bass and the kick by itself and we'll dial in some of the settings on hype. We'll turn on the compression module first and you'll see that this uh, macro control essentially here is the same, it's mirrored in this section when you want to get more granular and get down to the settings. Uh, this on the left will actually control everything on the right and what's nice is it actually retains the uh, relation between the three of these dials so you could set up something like this and then adjust all three of them at the same time. Or just double click here to reset all of them again so they'd be adjusting at the same time. Same goes for the other controls. And you'll notice each one of these controls changes depending on the style of compression that you have dialed in. I'm gonna go with the Slam. I really like this one. It's quite an extreme sounding uh, compression. This, this one and Brick are really gonna be the sort of OTT sound that you're looking for. Let's dial this in slowly. We've got transient controls here and body controls for this one. Add in the mix first. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking for. You can hear that sort of really nasal, like percussive nature coming through on that saw, saw wave now. Let's play around with the body and the transient. So I want to keep some of that mid-range stuff there. The highs I'm actually going to roll off a little bit. Let's just dial back on the actual mix now as well. That's the original. And I really like that kind of presence that we're getting in that bass now. Um, we can pull that out further by adding some more harmonics to the sub bass as well. Now the harmonics, you can actually add different algorithms for the lows, mids, and highs separately, or you could do them all in one go like this. Uh, I mentioned the sign fold earlier on, let's check that one out. I'll turn up the mix and then play around with the intensity. Might leave the highs off. And we'll just reduce the intensity slightly on the lows as well. So I quite like how that's sounding right now. We can just A, B between the two of those. And you can actually do a little bit of EQing inside of this as well, just by adjusting the levels of the various bands in the multiband section here. There's so much more definition there for me now. So let's check this out on a bus as well. And this is right at home on drum buses, especially. Uh, it's really nice for kind of shaping and adding a little bit of sparkle to your drum bus and uh, kind of tightening up the, the dynamics as well. We'll take a listen to what I have here. So of course you could uh, apply this to specific elements like the snare perhaps. But let's just chuck this on the drum group itself. And let's dial in some compression first. I'm just gonna turn up everything here and just flick through the actual uh, compression styles to see what they sound like. Just set all of these to the similar levels. So that's pretty extreme. Quite useful for bringing up the sort of room sound in the drums. If you were mixing them in uh, using the parallel 
vibration like this. Really nice to kind of just bring up the, the background of, of the background ambience of the drums. We're looking for sort of more traditional compression, I think, in this case. That combo actually does a pretty good job. I think the combo is a slam and brick combined, but uh, this actually... Again, this is a pretty extreme example, but... Let's check out the gentle. So that's nice and subtle, but I really like what that's doing too. And I really want to add some harmonics to kind of bring a little bit of shine out on the top. So let's head over to the harmonics section here and we will just reset these once again. So I really like this saturate uh, algorithm. I'm gonna dial the mix down on these. Let's just bring it up on the highs for now. Maybe some of the mids. So you can hear the difference there without adding too much volume. We've added a fair amount of the harmonic generation here, but it's still subtle. Let's jump into the stereo section last. We'll turn that on. We've got quite a bit of stereo information in those sort of loose shakers. We can bring that out a little bit. That's actually really nice, bringing that out, especially in the mids there. Let's just adjust the tone slightly. And I like that now it's kind of just filling up the, the drum bus a little bit more. Let's hear that all together now with everything. out a little bit more at us and goes for the bass also find with hype it's really nice to kind of uh, focus things in the mid range especially it's very easy using harmonics to kind of get stuff to pop out in the mids and it's one area that's often kind of neglected uh, in mix downs people tend to not focus on the mids as much and that's really where all the action is happening if you want to get a loud mix a lot of the time it's uh, the mids that are really kind of making stuff loud and in your face so having hype to seat things in the mix uh, just using harmonic generation like this is a really really handy tool to have at your disposal when working on a mix down so lastly let's just stick this straight on the master as well just see what happens um my master channel is down here i just have ozone maximizer often running when i'm working on a track i like to work into a limiter a lot of times some people say don't do this some people say do this it's really up to you i just like it there so that i can turn it on and off uh just kind of gives me a guide as to uh, you know where things are hitting the limiter whilst i'm actually building the track obviously my trusty metric ab is on every single project that i do uh, at all times, it's in my auto load, and I use this all the time. I've also got just SPL PQ on here, just uh, rolling off some of the lows. Uh, nothing really happening on that one until I finish the track later on. But what we're going to do is we'll stick hype into the master between the limiter and PQ there. And let's just take a listen to what this can do to the character. Turn on compression, harmonics, turn on the zero two. thing with the presets is they're actually master presets that are available from the preset browser here but you can load them up separately uh, 
basically the preset from this one. You can load up just the compressor settings, you can load up just the harmonics uh, se uh, section, uh, just the stereo section from the very, you see these are the two same presets here. And then you can also lock the frequencies for the uh, crossovers for the multiband section here as well. So you could change between different presets and uh, not have the frequencies being adjusted at all. Um, and you can see how quickly and easy I can just kind of go through the sound palette that they have on hand. Dial in some of those elements. Which I quite like what that compression is doing there. Let's take a listen to the stereo section too. Really nice happening with that warehouse glue there. Probably going to want to set this to the linear filters for this. And then when I arrive at a vibe that I kind of like there, we can just start dialing this back. Let's take a listen to this on and off now. I just love the upfrontness of the sound that you get out of this. It's just sort of a three-dimensional detail that kind of pops out, especially in the mid-range and then also in the stereo field that just the clarity kind of just increases on the entire mix for me. And it's just really easy to accomplish, as you can see, using just these macro dials. I haven't even touched the actual settings here. We could go in here and change these up if you want, um, but you could just be mixing and matching different presets until you find something that works, a combination that works for you. Dial in a small amount of mix on that and Bob's your uncle, you're all sorted. Cool, so I'm gonna cut it there. Like I said, I didn't wanna get into the technicalities of this as much as I wanted to just kind of show you how it can be a really, really useful tool uh, when it comes to your mixes. I think this is gonna be incredibly versatile, but in my opinion, especially for my kind of music that I'm doing, I really, really like the tone and the sound of this uh, processor. I think they've done a fantastic job with this. Uh, so go and check this out, Hype from Adapter Audio and Ursa DSP from Plugin Alliance. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, found this useful. Take care, see ya.